Hey, this is James Decon, and today I've got a short video just talking about the debug drawer in Bullet, which we're going to want in our future videos, and you, you are absolutely going to want to use. It is very helpful to troubleshoot any kind of physics issues, and so we can take a look at what that uh, looks like here. Uh, you'll see all these outlines, kind of like a wireframe drawn around the objects, and at first when the objects are active, they stay white. And um, that means that that is the active state. When they want to deactivate, they will be in a teal color. As you'll see, this cone is becoming teal because there's an object that's moving around it. And then we also have green, which most of the objects are. Now, green means that it's in a sleeping state, which is for performance reasons. But you can see that when a moving object gets near, it actually wakes them up. Um, it, just to know that, hey, we're very close to a moving object. Let's wake up in case we get hit. Uh, now that's these colors that we can see here. There's also a red color and that color signifies that an object has been told not to go to sleep. It's called disable deactivation, which will mean that it, uh, red means that it's always uh, always active. It's not going to go to sleep. Now you might be wondering where do we where do we find out where these colors are? And I got I had to dig around a bit for myself. I googled. It's probably out there somewhere, but I could not find it. So I ended up going into the uh, libgdx repository into the bullet uh, native code and we look at the header file for uh, the debug drawer and we can see here these default colors uh, which are set to an active object red green blue is all one so that's why we get white uh, deactivated object so green it's inactive or sleeping we should say and then uh, once deactivation right so that's where we get that teal color from and we also have disable deactivation um, object. So that's an object that doesn't go to sleep, which you have to specify that in your code. And that's going to be red. Some of these other ones uh, I don't really worry about here. Uh, these are the ones that, at least in my experience, I, I usually end up looking at, uh, mainly because I only use a debug drawer for a few things. But if you forget and you want to figure out what the color codes mean, you can find them here. Just to very quickly show you how helpful this tool can be, I have intentionally messed up the dimensions of the boxes when I pass them the bullet. So we can see here that um, the box sizes are way off. And of course you would notice this without the drawer on, but uh, sometimes it's more subtle. And so having this drawer makes it really easy to see if, if there is a misalignment between your objects uh, and your, your physical objects and your 3D models. So I just wanted to show you that. That's where this tool can really come in handy because I promise you, well, I won't promise, but I guarantee most people run into this issue at some point where it's like, man, why is, it, why is the objects misaligned? And this tool will help you troubleshoot that and find where that's happening. Now we're gonna go ahead and add the debug drawer to our project. And so what we're going to do is head over to the bullet physics system that we created in the last video. And over here, we're going to want to, so we'll start, we'll create a reference to the debug drawer. And I think, yeah, just call it debug drawer here. And let's go down to our constructor and initialize that. And I'm also going to set the drawing mode. Uh, I think I think it's wireframe by default. Could be wrong there, but I'm going to set it here anyways, just so that um, it's more for reference. So this set debug mode on the debug drawer. Here we go, debug draw modes. And we're going to start with wireframe because that's one of the most detailed drawing modes that it has, uh, but it also, just to mention, the debug drawer is not is meant for debugging. It is not the most efficient drawing uh, tool. Um, so, so here, let's set debug drawer and just pass it in. Now, what I was saying is that it's not the most efficient drawing tool. And if you have a lot of objects on, on the screen, you're actually going to get an FPS drop. And I don't care how good of a graphics card you have. I'm running a 3080. And if I have a lot of objects on screen, my FPS starts dropping. So... If you have a big FPS drop, there's different drawing modes to help reduce the complexity of the drawing, uh, the debug drawer. Uh, for example, draw A, A, B, B. Now what that will do is just draw the boxes. I'll show that in a minute, 
Uh, but let's just talk about, let's just get it set up for now and and then we'll come back to this. So let's set it back to wireframe. All right, so we've instantiated our, our debug drawer. We pass it into the Dynamics world. And now we're gonna want another method here in our physics system. And we'll just call render, pass in a camera to that. And to do the drawing, we can call debugdrawer.begin, give it the camera. And now we call the dynamics world and, and tell it to draw the debug world. And then we can call the debug drawer end function. And that should take care of it. So now if we head over to our, let's see, our base screen into our render method, I'm gonna put it before the UI, but after everything else renders, we'll call the physics system render method, pass in the camera. And so that should enable the debug drawer here. Let's make sure. There it is. So uh, that's how simple it is to enable the debug drawer. So uh, it, there's no reason if you have, if you're troubleshooting bullet, this is one of the first things you should uh, set up uh, to help you troubleshoot. Now let's just take a look back here at the drawing mode. If the debug drawer is just slowing your computer down, um, you can switch it over to, I generally would use the AABB, uh, Access Align Bounding Box is what that is. And if we take a look now, it's gonna be a much simpler uh, representation of the objects. Now they're all just boxes. Um, so you know, you're not seeing the rotations and things like that. But if you just need to see, you know, in general, is it aligning up or not? Or if your whole world is boxes, well, then it's going to be great. <laughs> so then you can use this method just to get a lot of objects debugging on screen at once without having a slowdown. So that's the purpose of using that uh, debug draw mode. There's some other ones there, but uh, wireframe and draw AABB, those are the, the most common ones that I use. For this part, I've just sped it up as all I'm doing is adding a Boolean flag to be able to turn on or turn off debug drawing based on the F1 key. And this is just for use in the future tutorials. So while we're doing this, and I just want to mention again that uh, I highly encourage you to spend some time tinkering with the debug drawer. Um, you know, what I've covered here is just an introduction. Uh, you could see there's many different drawing modes and the debug drawer even has options to debug draw text and other things as well. So definitely check it out and I hope the video helped. Thanks for watching.